So we meet again in our new video in which we're going to discuss about one new chapter what we call as face diagrams. When you see this picture, you can see like three different faces of the water system, which is the iceberg, the water and the ocean or the sea, and the vapor, which is the cloud. These faces actually can be represented into this diagram here and this diagram is what we call a phase diagram okay before we move on to the phase diagram itself it is very important for you to understand or maybe to get to know the definition of certain things like component and phase okay what is component this term is being used regularly in this chapter component means chemically recognizable species okay for instance we have ferrum we have carbon we also have like copper or nickel so these are called component so again another term binary alloy what is it binary alloy is actually an alloy that contains two components ternary alloy contains three components and etc etc the next one is Phase. What is phase? It's just a portion of a system that has uniform physical and chemical characteristics. So make sure you know the definition of this. So two distinct phases in a system will have distinct physical and or, or chemical characteristics. So example given here, water and oil. So these two distinct phases, they have distinct physical and chemical characteristics then they are separated from each other by definite phase boundaries when you look at this the red line here represents the phase boundaries and these are the phases solid liquid vapor and the red line are the phase boundaries so a phase may contain one or more components a single phase system is called homogeneous so this is another term a single phase system is called homogeneous system with two or more faces are mixtures or heterogeneous system so a few terms here that you need to get yourself familiar is component phase homogeneous heterogeneous phase boundaries another important concept that you will be using throughout this chapter is what we call as microstructure so shown here are examples of the microstructures taken by the electron microscopy so this is what looks like during certain phases of a steel alloy so phase diagram actually will help us to understand and predict microstructures okay so the properties of an alloy actually depends not only on the proportions of the phases but also on how they are arranged structurally at the microscopic level by knowing how the microstructures look like there are so many things that we can do for steel alloy in terms of the manufacturing and processing and heat and milling and so on so the microstructure is actually specified by number of faces their proportions and their arrangement in space so the most important thing is you know what microstructure is this is what microstructure look like and during certain certain phases in the phase diagram you should be able to actually express how the microstructure looks like at certain certain compositions of the components next is phase diagram so in its easiest easiest definition phase diagram actually uh, defines as the equilibrium diagram it is actually a graphical representation of the phases evolve during after before any kind of transformation that are present in a material at various temperatures and pressures and compositions it actually describes the equilibrium conditions and very very helpful in predicting phase transformations and the resulting microstructures so usually solvent we call it solvent uh, for the host or major component in the solution and for the solute it is for the use of when we want to define the minor component so this is another important term solubility limit 
is the maximum concentration of solute that will dissolve in a solvent to form a solution. So the addition of solute in excess of this solubility limit will result in the formation of another solid solution or compound that has a distinctively different composition if we actually exceed the maximum concentration. To illustrate this concept better, let's consider a sugar water system so in which the sugar is a solute and the water is uh, we can represent it is as the solvent so initially as sugar is added to the water well this is like very very common sense a sugar water solution or syrup will form okay as more sugar is introduced into this beaker the solution becomes even more concentrated until the solubility limit is reached or the solution becomes saturated with sugar. So at this time, the solution is not capable of dissolving any more sugar and further addition simply will settle to the bottom of the glasses or the beaker. So thus we can call that the system now consists of two separate substances which is a sugar water syrup liquid solution. This is the sugar water syrup liquid solution and the solid crystals of undissolved sugar because it has definitely exceeded the solubility limit. This solubility limit of sugar in water depends on the temperature of the water and can be represented in graphical form on a plot of temperature versus composition of the component sugar and water in weight percent. This red line here represents the solubility limit and the solubility limit at some temperature is the composition that corresponds to the intersection of the given temperature coordinate and the solubility line. It's just the intersection. Okay, along this composition line or the composition axis, increasing sugar concentration is going from left to right. So this part here, we have 0% sugar and 100% water. And this right hand side, we have 100% sugar and 0% water. So if we are reading on sugar, so you just look at the first line here. If you are looking for composition of water, then you can refer to the second line here. At the very right hand side, we only have 100% sugar, meaning all solid sugar. And this part here, we have 100% water, meaning it's all water, no sugar is dissolved. So because only two components are involved, we have because uh, we have sugar and water. So the sum of the concentrations at any compositions will definitely, will always be equal to 100. So this is 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%. If there are more components, the total composition of all the three components will add up to 100%. Okay, here is an example on the solid solubility limit. The question is, what is the maximum solubility of sugar in weight percent in water at 20 degrees Celsius and 80 degrees Celsius? So we just look one by one. First of all, we look at this temperature, 20 degrees Celsius. And you know that this is your solubility limit. Alright, so what you do is you just find the intersection between this linear line at 20 degrees Celsius and the solubility limit line and then check out the composition. So the composition is 63 weight percent of sugar. So for 20 degrees Celsius, the maximum solubility is 63 weight percent. And another one for 80 degrees Celsius for this one, the intersection between this linear line and the solid, so, sorry, and the solubility limit line is actually 75. So the answer shall be for 80 degrees Celsius, the maximum solubility of sugar is 75 with percent.